The centre section touchscreen provides a permanent overview of the main and monitor outputs, displaying the level, gain and format of every bus output, as well as compression and limiting via the gain reduction metering and tone talkback status as label colour changes. Additional information can be obtained by touching the meter of the relevant output. This brings up a schematic style visualisation of the selected feed which overlays a predefined section of the main display. Both program and group outputs have dedicated dynamics processing as well as an insert point and optional delay. Processing order is fully configurable including post as well as pre-fader support for any function. AUX bus outputs have a pre-fader insert point. Functions can be controlled directly from the touch screen or through additional sub-menus in the case of meter options and processing order. The master encoder and left-right page keys add hardware control for gain functions and for menu scrolling. Center section user-free keys offer direct access to touch screen controls. Selecting the setup option via the touch screen menu keys causes the output status page to be displayed when the meter is touched. For the program output, this is where the stereo and mono downmix coefficients can be entered via a touchscreen numeric keypad and where the program buses are configured for 5.1 or stereo operation. C100 includes 5.1 operation as part of the basic console configuration, not as a cost option. Touching any group meter brings up the pop-up to select the two group bus modes, eight stereo groups or the 5.1 options. The AUX Send status page is where buses can be linked for stereo, as well as a number of options for pre-fader sends. These include setting the mute on open fader mode to cut the feed to the studio monitor speakers when a source is live, and the alternate mute on close fader option, often used to remove a source from a pre-fader audience PA send when the source is off air. The utility bus setup page is where stereo and 5.1 links can be set up for consecutive utility buses. Activating the reverse bus menu key displays an overview of all the channels feeding the selected bus when the meter is touched, including the option to assign or clear channels directly from the touchscreen pop-up. The master encoder scrolls through the pages of the selected group for fast access to console routing. The main monitoring controls, the console layer switching, the user option keys, and the miscellaneous level control are located below the touchscreen above the eight center section fader strips. User metering and custom switch options are normally located in the area above the touchscreen. Adding a second master tile, as you can see in this console, enhances control surface ergonomics by placing critical controls closer to the faders and adds redundancy support in the event of a control failure on the primary master tile. The second master tile can also be used in conjunction with the dual user option for simultaneous control from two operators. For maximum flexibility, all channel bays can be fitted with a master tile. Each physical fader strip can be assigned to one or optionally two channel paths, and each of these channel paths can control one or more linked DSP channels formatted as mono, stereo, 5.1 or 7.1 channels, with full processing and panning. The faders can also be bus masters or control group masters, with a choice of fixed VCA style or moving fader operation. Normally channel paths are assigned to the channel bay faders and the master functions assigned to the faders in the center section bay, but any combination is valid. The path assignment of the console's physical fader strips are saved in layers, which can be recalled via dedicated keys located just beneath the center section touchscreen. Banking keys allow access to an unlimited number of layers. The layers are fully user configurable with the ability to repeat channels and to lock channels via dedicated front panel keys when required. Each fader strip's position can be shuffled or moved within a layer or between layers. A dual user mode can be enabled from the configuration menu to isolate a bay or bays from the main user layer switching. The second user bays can then have their own layer switching as well as independent PFL monitoring. Fitting a master channel in the second user bay ensures full control over all channel strip functions, as well as full access to the channel strip routing and configuration menus. The bays can be remote from the main console frame if required. 